This was quite amazing this morning. The Jewish National Fund brings in a black Gentile to argue that there's uh, uh, anti-Israel bias, and an Israeli liberal reporter from Washington argues that there isn't. Do you suppose that, that, that there is, is it peer pressure in his bubble that forces him to, to march in step there and then somehow, or, where do you think he's coming from? I, I think that's unfair. I think he perceives the world the way he does, uh, legitimately and in good faith. He's just, he's just wrong. Yeah. Um, it, it was a little bizarre, but we live in a world where Eminem is a top rapper and uh, the top golfer at one time was Tiger Woods, a black guy. So lots of strange combinations uh, take place. I was just surprised that he was so adamant that he felt the media were pretty much fair and balanced when it comes to Israel. They are not. Uh, maybe that's how he feels about all their reportage, and so Israel doesn't... Well, I also think he is a he is in the print journalism business, right. and I believe that there is a circle the wagons kind of feel when you are perceived as uh, putting out misinformation. I think there's a, there's a reaction to kind of defend your profession, and maybe that's part of what's going on. I, I don't want to psychoanalyze him. He seems like a smart guy. I just think he's wrong. I mean, when it comes to the way John Kerry, as I mentioned when I was speaking, the former Secretary of State can just routinely and, and blithely say that Israel does not want peace. Uh, again, I, it's offensive. And the fact that he wasn't jumped on, it wasn't covered by CBS, by NBC, by, by it should have been a front page newspaper story. John Kerry, former Secretary of State, uh, blasts Israel, accuses Israel of not wanting peace. That should have been a headline, but it wasn't. And this is what I mean by bias, the story that isn't covered, the story that isn't uh, uh, put out, the perspective that's, that's skewed. One of the problems when we, we talk about the coverage of Israel, if, if there's a death in Israel, if there's a, a, a homicide bombing, two people are killed. You pick up the newspaper, okay, two people got killed. That's not that bad. Israel is one-fiftieth the size of America. Put that in American terms, that's like 100 people got killed last night. That's more than people that were killed in the shooting in Las Vegas, more people were, than were killed in the, in the uh, massacre uh, in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. And so part of the bias of the media is the failure of Americans to put perspective on this. If four people get killed, that's 200 people, if you put it in American terms, who were killed. And if somebody, something happened last night where 200 people were killed, we probably wouldn't, we wouldn't be here right now. You probably would have canceled the, the meeting because we all would have been in, in anguish. And so this is the kind of bias I'm talking about. It's about perspective. It's about slant. It's about the way they perceive the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you were introduced, did they introduce you as a Salem radio, radio uh, a commentator? You know what? I didn't pay attention to the introduction. I can't remember. Uh -huh. but, uh, when people heard KRLA, uh, which is a, a conservative talk host, mm -hmm. uh, there was probably a knee-jerk reaction within uh, the first, let me say, uh, the majority of, of the audience that, well, he's, he's going to be conservative. But once they started hearing your perspectives, all of a sudden people started applauding and changing, changing their view. Well, that was nice. Uh, I, I'm really not a conservative. I'm a libertarian. Uh, I believe in states' rights. Uh, I believe in Article One, Section 8 of the Constitution, uh, and uh, that most of the things that we de debate and fight over should be handled at the state level, whether it's abortion, whether it's uh, the war on drugs, whether it's doctor-assisted suicide, whether it's same-sex marriage. All these things, in my opinion, should be done on a state-by-state -state basis. And if most of the people in the room who are left-wing were to have a conversation with me for about 10 minutes, I suspect that it, they'd be agreeing with me almost at least 50 percent of the time. So this may be the first exposure that uh, more than half of this audience is getting to uh, your perspectives or p points of view uh, f from your perspective. What do you think about that? It's about time. <laughs> Day late and a dollar short. <laughs> uh, what are the prospects of uh, people following you who are not in Los Angeles or in a city that carries your show? Quite easy. I, my show airs every day from 3 until 6 live. You can get it on LarryElder.com. 3 until 6, is that Eastern? Uh, uh, Pacific, I'm sorry. Uh, 6 to 9 um, Eastern. I'm also very active on Twitter. My handle is at Larry Elder, and my blog is ElderStatement.com. And of course, I've got a website called LarryElder.com. So I'm really easy to find. How did you feel coming to address this audience in, in this setting, in, in preparing? Because it seems like you prepared, did you? No, I just rolled out of bed and just started. Of course I prepared. I spent hours on this. Um, I, I was fine. I just wanted to make sure I didn't hurt my opponent. <laughs> they're, still, they're still wiping up the blood. <laughs> they should have called a cut man. <laughs> That's a boxing term? It's a boxing term, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, you got it.